First of all, we are going to use this library pthread.h to create threads in C language. In Linux, we will be using this library pthread.h and, and the main function that we will use to create threads is pthread underscore create. So we will use this function. Now, if you want to look at the functionality and the other details of this function, you can look it up in the manual pages of Linux. How can you open the manual pages? You can type man, man space pthread underscore create in the in your terminal in, in your Linux terminal and you can see the details for this function or any other function which you want you, you just write the word man space and then the name of the function whichever function you want to look up so these are the four parameters of this function which we will just see that what are they about sorry this one goes up to here and then this one okay now this first parameter is the thread id okay so actually this is the um uh, this is a pointer you can you can see right here that this is a pointer so obviously whenever you see a pointer it means we are dealing with threads uh, sorry it means we are dealing with addresses so obviously this uh, first parameter is the address of thread id right uh, how will we create a thread id I, i'll show you in a few minutes okay so first parameter is thread id the second parameter is known as attribute or behavior of a thread. Okay, uh, let's first of all write this. Second parameter is the attribute or behavior of a thread. Now, uh, there are two types of behavior of a thread uh, and those two types are joinable, joinable behavior and detached. So a thread can either you can say a thread can be of two types a thread is of two types joinable threads and detached threads and joinable thread is and joinable thread is the default behavior of a thread okay so what is the difference between a joinable thread and a detached thread the difference is when a thread is joinable then uh, whenever that thread is created the main program or the main thread waits for this thread to join back and unless this thread join back the main thread does not uh, proceed further the main thread is paused and the main thread actually wait for it to waits for it to join back also when this thread joinable thread joins the main thread back uh, uh, after joining upon joining its resources are released and uh, it's uh, it's finally deleted right but if a thread is detached that means uh, this thread was initiated by the main th by the main thread or the process whatever this thread was initiated but the main thread will not wait for it to join back so the main thread will not be paused and uh, upon the completion of this thread it will destroy its resources on its own okay so, so we do that in a, in a case when um, in, in such a case when we don't uh, when, when we want some functionality which is totally independent from the main thread or we don't want the results of that functionality or anything uh, from the output of that functionality in the main. So, so it, it can be something totally independent which we just want to be done and then when it's done we just want it to be finished. In, in such cases we use detached threads. Also, since joinable thread is the default behavior, so if we leave this second at in this second parameter attribute, this this parameter, this this one right here, if we leave it as empty, or in other way we can say it, if we write null here, then that th that thread will always be joinable. It will not be detached. But if we want to make a detached thread, we will do we will have to do some extra steps for it. Right, we're not going into the detail of that right now. But uh, if if you write null, that thread is joinable. If you don't, uh, if you don't want to do that, if you want to make a detached thread, you have to do some extra steps, which we will uh, go into later on. Okay. The third thing is the third parameter of a thread uh, of of this function p thread p thread underscore create is you can you can see right here a routine, and by that you can guess what it will be. So routine or method or function, they are or they are the names of 
there are synonyms they are the names of a similar thing in which is function so actually the third parameter is actually the name of the function that we will pass it as an argument which we actually want to run so so remember we just discussed that we will write a function in, in the previous slide we discussed that we will write a function and we will just create a thread and run this function on that thread so actually this um, parameter right here is actually that function now what is important you can see is there are two things first thing is uh, you can see void right here right so the return type of this function must be void we are forced by this library by whoever wrote this that this function that the return type of the function that you wanna pass in the thread must be void pointer return type of that function must be void pointer and whatever input that function takes so whether whatever parameters this function take must be of the type void pointer so these are the two things that we are forced to do and we have to write our function accordingly the third thing is you can see there is a static right here and i just told you in, in this first in the case of first parameter that whenever you are uh, seeing static somewhere that means you are dealing with addresses so what is the address of a function what do you call the address of a function can you can you think of it i think you have studied it before and so so the okay i'll tell you the answer the, the answer is the address of a function is known as delegate so this is actually the function delegate which means that you will not write function call here you will just write the name of the function here and name of the function actually has address to that function itself so you will just write the name of name here suppose name of your function is add so you will not write it like this this function call you will not do that at all what you will do is you will just write the name of this function that's it right no parenthesis no um, function call okay now let's discuss the last uh, parameter the last parameter is it's simple these are just the arguments of this function so since I just told you that you have to write the name of the function, you don't have to write it like this, not like a function call. So obviously, if you want to pass some parameters to it, how will you do that? For that, you have this uh, fourth parameter of this uh, function, pthread.underscore So what you will do is whatever parameters that you want to pass to this function, you will write them right here. And obviously, uh, the data type of those parameters, those um, arguments must be white static. okay so this was it now let's discuss this thing so what is this this is the return type of the function um, of the function p thread underscore ta so this is the return type let's see what will happen when you will create a function i mean what will be the return type of a thread if this thread was created successfully and if it was, was not created successfully what will be the return type then let's see that so on the case of success the return value of this function will be zero so you will check it you will just put an if block and see if the value equal equals to zero that means your function was created successfully else it's not created successfully it will return an error number uh, when it's not created successfully so you can search that error number and see what was your problem why wasn't it created successfully now let's dive deeper and let's see the code a proper code for a thread let's see that and you will understand it better that way <laughs> 